Okay, welcome to today's video in which what we're going to do is we're going to look at creating our interactive outro template. Now, I've started using this on my videos and it increases interactivity, you know, with people that can basically go across and click and view some of your other videos and you're giving them the option to as well subscribe and do other things when they're viewing your videos. Now this is a great little feature to add to your videos and if you want to see the other video you'll see that link popping up about now. So as promised in yesterday's video I was going to show you a more in-depth tutorial as to how I created this using Sony Vegas and this on the screen as you can see is a sample of basically what I included yesterday. So you'll see here this is actually what the finished template looks like with all of the videos actually loaded in and if, if I scrub the playhead through you actually see that these are all the live videos. Now what we're going to do in this video is I'm going to start a new project and we're going to build this up pretty much from scratch. So it'll be File, New, Select New Project. Now as you can see we have absolutely nothing so I need to go and get all of the media, the project media that I'm going to use and drop it into the software. So as it stands at the minute I've loaded in five different videos. Now these are five completely separate videos uh, in their own right but I've loaded them all into the project media tab and what we're going to do is we're going to simulate having uh, these four, uh, the last four as these smaller images or the smaller or clickable images that you'll see on YouTube that you can click the annotations and go and view that specific video. The fifth video is going to be the main video, so simulating you know the main video content, that, which is the full video up until the outro actually starts to happen. So of course we also want to include that fifth video. Now one other element that I would like to add in is the actual background template because believe it or not that's actually an image that I created in Photoshop. So I've now added in the actual background image that I'm going to use and you'll see it'll all become apparent as I start to build this project up. So basically now what I want to do is I want to drop these files into the software and if you know how sort of Photoshop works, everything works in layers and the same is true with this video editing software. So layer one will sit below, you know, the first item I drop in will be the bottom of the pile and then the next video goes on top of that the next video on top of that and so forth. So what I want to the very back of my video is actually the image, the interactive outro template. So if I drop that in, um, you'll see why I want this to the back. Basically everything, all of my content is going to be shrunk down to fit in each, each of these greyed out areas and that's where the video will actually, the animation, that's where the video goes once you sort of set up your template. So once you do that then you need to drop in the five video tracks. So I'm going to create five new sort of video tracks within the software. So to add in a new video track what you can do is come over to this side, uh, right click and select insert video track or additionally you can use the shortcut which is control shift and Q on a PC. All right. So I've now added in five new video tracks and what I'm going to do is I'm going to load each of the videos into a track. So I have dropped all of the five tracks in um, One, the first thing that I need to do straight away is get rid of all of the other audios. I don't want sort of the mixed up or the messed up audio coming from five different videos. So I only really want to keep the audio content of the main video. So to do that in Sony Vegas you need to come up and I need to unlock the event grouping. Then I can come down and select the audio. Once I know I have the audio selected well then I can hit delete and it will remove the audio. I can also uh, delete the track now that I've got rid of the audio. I'll do this for all five. Okay, so I now have uh, basically four video files without audio and I have the fifth video file which is the bottom one which is the main video and it has its audio so you'll only hear the audio from the one video. Now what I need to do is I need to obviously move or make these videos smaller. So to do that what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off all of the other tracks that I'm not working with and I'll basically turn each one on as I come to work with it. You'll see here now we're sitting, we're looking at the very bottom track which is our template and uh, so the first track I'll turn on is actually going to be the main video. Now what I want to do is I want to go into the event pan crop. Basically I want to shift the size of this video, make it smaller and position it into my template. 
So I click the, the square icon here, which is the event pan crop, and it popped me up a new window. So basically to make my video smaller on the screen, what I do is I come to one of the corners and I'll drag it out. Now, before you do that, you want to ensure that you size about center and you also have the lock aspect ratio enabled as well. So that means it'll resize your video whilst it actually keeps its sort of 16-9 ratio. So what you do is you come down to the corner and you drag out. And as you see as I drag out, it's actually making this video smaller. And the track below actually begins to appear. So what I then want to do is move this about and size this basically. Until it fits perfectly over my template. So once I have that video sized and positioned perfectly, I can then come up to the next layer and start working on the next video. So if I unmute that video, you'll see it's now full size over the top of you know the previous video. So what I need to do is I need to click the event pan crop again and obviously resize this video. Now again, what we do, we have the same settings again where our size about center and our lock aspect ratio is held. We come down to the corner and we literally drag it out. This time now we're going to make the video smaller because it's going to be one of the interactive smaller videos down to the bottom. So what we want to do is we want to drag this about and obviously resize and position this. Now I'm going to work away with this and get this in position and then do the same for the next few tracks. So that's the next video into position. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to fast forward and we're going to put all of the videos into their position. So I work up through the next track and the track after that. So that's basically it. I have now 
basically used the event pan crop on all five of the videos. I have made them all smaller so that they're all visible on the screen. Now you can also add in text below each video telling the viewers what each video is about and you can either do that in the Sony Vegas software or you can do it in any sort of image editing software. Now I also have this template as a downloadable PSD file that you can use and in Photoshop you can actually place the text below each of the greyed out areas and that way you know you can put it below this grey area here and then once you plan what each video is going to be drop in the text and that way it will display and it will look as if it's part of the video. So generally what I will do is I will animate into this at the tail end of the video. So the final 20 seconds of the video will animate into this and it gives the interactive element and it allows people to see the other videos to the bottom here. And then once we upload this into YouTube, this is where the magic happens. We're able to use the annotations to make them clickable links to each of these specific videos. Now before we go off to YouTube itself and show you how that portion of it's done, uh, I also wanted to discuss that you can also do this using Camtasia Studio 8. Now I'll not actually go into a tutorial but uh, it can be done. You can literally sort of drop five to six videos in, make them you know smaller, position them on the screen where you want them and pretty much do exactly as I'm doing only in Camtasia. So once you actually upload your video into YouTube and you're within your video manager, what you can do is you can click the downward arrow here and select annotations. I'll just pause that. You'll see here I actually have the annotations already loaded in and um, what we'll do is we'll come forward to this point in the video and uh, we'll look at the annotations. So we've now jumped forward in time to the tail end of the video where we want this sort of interactive elements to appear or where they do appear within the video. What we want to do now is make these all clickable links and it's quite easy to do. What you want to do is select add annotation and select spotlight. Once you have this, then you can literally drag the square to wherever you want. And if we put it over the top, you'll see you place it over the top of the video. You select your color size and then you also select the time you want it to start and end. The next thing you need to do is select link and you're linking to a video. So you need to go and get the video URL of each one of these. So as you can see, this is actually this video here and I've added in the YouTube video URL that I'm linking this video to. I've chosen a red outline to display around the video so if people sort of hover over it they can see the red, they know it's a clickable link. And I've done this in the case for all four videos and additionally I've also added in a subscribe option. I've used the same call out except I've used a yellow outline for it and I give the option for people to subscribe to my channel by clicking this link. So that's it for today's video. I hope you found it helpful. I hope you can see yourself using uh, interactive elements like this and literally getting creative with the tools that you have at hand, your own ideas and using the likes of these annotations within YouTube. This gives you the option to become interactive. It gives you the option to get people to do more than just watch your video and then leave. And adding these in to your videos will increase your views, it will increase your traffic, it should grow your subscriber base and you're standing out from the crowd basically because you're doing something completely different or you're doing something that not a lot of other marketers are doing. So that's it for today's video. Of course what you should be doing now is clicking one of the links directly below this video and going off and viewing another one of my helpful tips. My name's Chris Cole from IamChrisCole.com. Thanks a lot for watching. Please also remember to subscribe to my channel and if you do have any questions please drop them into the comments area.